Welcome back to the channel guys, Darth Sloan here. And today I'm gonna to be comparing the way of the hunter to Call of the Wild. And let me say that Call of the Wild is my number one love, okay? But this way of the hunter game has come a long way for me, especially when playing Tikka Moon Plains, which is Africa as you see here. We're just gonna go over some of the similarities, some of the differences, and it's not really that one game is better than the other. It's a change of pace. They're, they're different games, so you can't compare them to each other. They both have different goals, and it depends on which goal you're after. And we're gonna, we're gonna dive into it and look at that. As you can see right now, I'm gonna continue the story mission on Tick Moon Plains. Um, you can you can choose the story mission on the other maps if you want, but this is the new map, so this is what we're going to do. And this is what's gotten me back into Way of the Hunter after a long hiatus. You have free hunt, you have multiplayer story if I wanted to change to a different map. But we're going to continue to come in planes. And let's just kind of, if you're like me and maybe didn't play much of Way of the Hunter to start with, I think as of right now, I only have about 21 hours in the game total and that's counting you know all the way back to when it first came out but let's just start right here we've got uh we've got a bow out right so i'm gonna i'm gonna right click with my bow and you can see here i've got a red dot side on it i can change my zeroing by pressing the up arrow 35 40. you can see the angle going up i can zero to 70 but now i don't recommend a 70 meter shot because i haven't landed a vital yet 70 meters i guess you got to play the wind a lot with that but let's get into the brass tacks here let's look at some things so we have our character we have our our perks hunter rating is how good of a job you did hunting uh i use the correct ammo and things so i got a five star hunter rating the trophy rating is where you want you also want to get a five star trophy which in call of the wild would be the equivalent of a diamond uh, these animals age on here now this is we're getting into some of the differences now that i like so you can watch a herd of animals grow they will even die of old age so for example you have to do some herd managing on this game in order to produce bigger animals um, more systematically. So you're kind of culling out the bad genes. So a mature animal is what you're looking for. That's what's going to make five star. So if you find a mature one star, it's not going to live long enough to make a five star. Um, from from what we know. So those are the ones you want to call. Uh, you want to call them out and kill them, get them off the map. And basically you want to leave your bigger animals so that they breed and produce with the, reproduce with the, uh, the females. And But let's look at the perks. Just at some of the differences. This is one of the things that I like about the way they do their perk system. In Call of the Wild, you just choose your perks, skills, and you're done with it, right? But with this, you can see like, let's look at Explorer. I have this perk already done, achieved, right? Play for 12 hours, right? I have that perk already done. I, these up here, over here in Outdoorsman, I have this one done um, before the third one. Right, so you don't have to do them in order. Like in Call of the Wild, you have to go in order and it unlocks an extra row or whatever. This one, you just get them when you get them. And what I like about it is when you do what it says, like right here, travel 15 kilometers in crouch stance. I've traveled seven and that's just from hunting. When I fill that up, I will get whatever this bonus is. Faster but louder movement when crouched. To use this perk, use action to walk fast while crouching. So that's what I like about it here. And, you know, you can see player sent 15% reduced for animals. So when you do the go that the that it gives you with, 
See here in an earshot, animals are more audible at 20% greater distance, see? So what I, I have to do those Nez Purs Valley collectibles, right? I found one out of seven, so. Anyway, you have something to do. We are close right here on travel 100 kilometers in a vehicle. I'm 93 out of 100, right? When I get that completed, seven more kilometers, animals alerted 25% less by vehicle. So I could drive up to a herd of animals sometimes and they don't even pay attention to my vehicle, which makes sense because there's a lot of safaris that people go out on and the animals get used to that in real life. So some of them spook to them, some of them don't, and they're used to it. So that makes sense. That's, that's a pretty pretty good perk. You know, I'm not saying I'm gonna go out there and hunt uh, with a vehicle and just hop out and shoot, but it is nice when you see a herd and you're just using your vehicle to get to a, another place or whatever, and there's a herd and you hop out and you can spot them and they're not running off. So that's a nice little perk. You know, but th this is what I like about the perks. You, they they give you something to do. Like this strategist here, sell ten called animals. So I'm four away there. I need to call in four more animals and, and harvest them and sell them, and then I will get second level calls available. And what do second level calls do? Well, they call a little bit bigger of an animal in. Right now, I used a rattler bag. Only the small one stars would come into it. The bigger ones just kind of stayed away. But as you get all three levels of the calls unlocked, then you can call the bigger animals. Let's look at inventory. So right now you look the hunting tier six, that's just like your ammo. Um, like if you go to the encyclopedia, look at animals, right? And I, let's look at, say I wanted to shoot a cape. Come down here. Now let me, let me point this out too. You don't automatically get this knowledge. I had to like click on so many Cape Buffalo tracks and spot so many and things like that before it unlocked them in the encyclopedia. So when you first start playing a map, if you've not interacted with anything from those animals, like when we first started, there was nothing here, right? Well, nothing to do with Africa. Let's say that anyway. Uh, none of the African animals were on here until I kind of unlocked them, right? So that's one of the differences too. The progression system, I like better in Way of the Hunter. That you kind of have to earn each little thing. Call of the Wild is just a different game and you just choose whatever when you level up. This game, it's not so much about what level you are, but it's what tasks have you done to earn each thing. So anyway, this kind of tells me when I click on Cape Buffalo here, it's hunting tier six and recommended hit energy, 44, 86 to 65, 23. There's a little thing that will tell you Bait, when you are a certain distance from a cape and, and you've got your scope pulled up, a little thing over here on the top right, and it'll be gold, and it'll tell you if, if you're good on your head energy and everything. You can be too far away or too close or whatever, and you can ruin the trophy. So that's something you got to watch out for, too, as we go forward uh, and we start finding more five stars and things like that. But um, let's look at the map. Now, this is a big difference from Hunter Call of the Wild. So I've been hunting a lot over in this area, as you can see, I've got a lot of animals discovered over here, but this is a hyena, right? And so I click on that, that particular herd of hyenas, here's where they drink. And if I had more uh, zones found, if I had their rest zone, if I had their feed zone, it would show me where they're at, but I don't as of right now. But and there's that, you know, Cape Buffalo drinking right there. They're sleeping up there. So I've got that bunch resting up there. So you click on it and it shows you where you have a zone for that particular herd. So this lion zone, for example, I'm kind of watching them, right? Uh, so I can spawn in here, go check on them every once in a while, see if I got a, a four star or a five star there and kind of watch them. I killed an albino lion there right so the reason i like to play the story mission too 
is it gives me a little something different. I used to play the story mission on Call of the Wild too, but now I, you know, I've done them all. I'm tired of them. But this kind of teaches you the game. You learn how to play the game. Jobs is how you end up, and you can see this one's active. I have to harvest a male greater kudu that weighs 250 kg or more using a bow. Now, you don't get tents, okay? So you have to go and discover campsites and you can fast travel to these campsites. Um, the lodges are already on the map for you. There's the main lodge. You see how it's kind of black and up here's this lodge or cabin. The lodge is where you'll go, you know, to buy your guns and weapons and things like that. But you can fast travel to all those things. You can change the time for free. These are probably hunting stands or some type of location that's relevant to a mission or maybe they're some type of monument or something like that. The movement now. Let, let's get into some of the controls too. All right, so... I like that you can kind of put these markers down here, which Call of the Wild has that too. Okay, I'm going to do something that I also like in this game that Call of the Wild does not have. We're going to use our Hunter Sense. I'm going to hit the Q button, as you can see in the bottom left, Hunter Sense. So watch what happens visually. Things kind of darken, right? Well, I've noticed, I think those are Greater Kudu. When we get down here, probably around Within 300 meters, maybe, maybe more, we should be able to start learning a little bit about these animals. Now, if I run real fast, watch what happens. See how light it got? I got to stop. But every time I stop, it lightens back up, right? But if I run, it changes. But we got to get closer to see what these are, and that's when you can start spotting them and seeing if they're two stars, three stars, whatever they are. But here's something else that we need to do. So we know we're about 370 meters away from them. I should be able to get close to 300 meters. We got a good wind. Now this game, you gotta be really, really more careful. They spook a lot easier than Call of the Wild. It's a little more challenging this game than Call of the Wild. But the reason that I'm back into it is because Africa is a lot of fun. As you can see here, we were standing right outside the, we were standing right outside the camp their cabin or whatever it was. Now there's an adult male. Harvest a male greater kudu. Weighs 250 kg or more. So that's with the bow. So we got to get, there's a mature one star. That's what we want, right? Now I'm just going to squat down here because I, and I'm actually going to lay down. Here's what I need to know. inventory uh i have collars on me greater kudu right there um doe grunt attracts females young buck grunt attracts low fitness males but you see a lot more animals now when i first started playing way of the hunter i didn't see a lot of animals and now i see plenty the movement speed when I get on Call of the Wild now, I feel like I'm sprinting, you know? You can see, beautiful. I give the nod to the graphics slightly to uh, Way of the Hunter. Now, Call of the Wild. As you know, I am a official partner content creator for Call of the Wild. I know Call of the Wild a lot better. I'm more familiar with it. The things I don't like is sometimes you can play a while without seeing an animal on the on the beginning maps. Now this map has pulled me back in because I see animals a lot now on Africa, which is another reason why people like Africa on Call of the Wild, I feel like, um, because you just see more animals. All right, we're 135 meters away, right? So that mature one star meal would be excellent. We are getting close. It is really, really challenging. And see, that one's looking back at me. It's hard to sneak up on a group because one of them can bust you. And I have to shoot. I can't shoot from a prone position. 
I have to shoot from a crouched position. Several of them looking back at me right now, alerted. I'm not going to be able to get close enough. I mean, they are all turned around looking at me. This game is challenging. That's the fun thing if you're up for a challenge. Now, sometimes I just want... To... They go. Sometimes you just... You want a fast-paced game, you play Call of the Wild, basically. All right, one of the things you can see, too. Here's walking normal. Here's a full sprint. Even the full sprint on this game, I just feel like it's so slow compared to Call of the Wild. And here's, here's your guns. Check this out. So you can see the distance up in the top right. Um, I can zero for... I can zero for one kilometer. <laughs> I mean, that's crazy, right? You can take those long shots. Now, you, can't, you don't even know what you're shooting at at that point, though. But as with anything, it's a matter of knowing your maps. I judged this game too quickly by how slow a pace it is. It is a little slower pace. Now, you're not going to be able to put tents down exactly where you want them. You have set places, set campsites that you have to fast travel to. And so there's a little bit of walking involved in it. So people don't like that, right? So call the wilds, boom, boom, boom. Fast pace, but sometimes you want a challenge, right? Sometimes you just want to shoot, you know, call the wilds a game. But if you're wanting to, you want that challenge, then this game. But I've said it before, I'm a real life hunter. You know, I've got both season coming up in about a month, Labor Day weekend. That's a big challenge. And real life hunters will tell you there are several times you go out and you stay in the stand all day and you don't see a thing. Do you want that in a hunting game? I don't. I don't. Some people might. I don't want to play a game for 10 hours and not see a deer or whatever I'm hunting for. If I've got two hours to play before work or after work, I want to see animals. That's just, that's my preference. But I like how open this map is. And you can get to these high spots and glass. I don't know exactly where to look at yet. All right, guys, we have come across some spotted hyena. All right, here's that one in front. Is that one right there? All right, there's 300 meters. We see a good drop of blood right there. Here's another thing I like. Just kind of getting an X. He's dropping blood all along through there. We made a good shot on him, I think. I think he may have died somewhere through there. I think he died behind that bush. So that's him. I don't think that's him. I think he died right through there. But you can see, uh, we put a shot on him. Now, the other part of this game that makes it really challenging is our work is not finished. Sometimes it can be really tough to blood trail these. That was good. We're in an open expanse, and I'm, I was able to watch him. And we may have seen him die. I, I think he died in that bush over there. But when you shoot with vegetation around, you have to blood trail. And you don't get to watch him. Or if he had ran immediately over the hill, blood trailing can sometimes be... A big challenge with this game. Oh my God, we are really close to some Cape Buffalo. And I hope they don't come eat us. They are really mean. <clears throat> I have been killed by them and they one shot you. All right, so Somewhere in this vicinity. Huh? This now, there's a medium amount. He, he's definitely dead. 
It's just, I want to go back to where we originally shot him. It will tell you if the animal survived or not. Like right here. Okay, medium amount of blood. Arabo's ammo expires slower and it might be further away. Okay. So we got pretty good blood here. And also I put those markers down. Kind of putting us off in the right direction. Yeah, we did watch it die. It died right there. All right, so here we go. You can see we caught a lot of left lung there. Uh, we can look at the overview. Now, the reason that I got a four star is because I used a six tier weapon on it. And so it's a little bit too high, too high of a weapon. All right, guys, I ha I'm staring at my first five star Five star male ring box. He's just bedded down right there. I'm hoping to zero to about 150 meters. I'm using grandpa's old rifle, which is a uh, tier four gun. All right, guys, here we go. Once again, one after that dude right there. It's about 170 meters away. That looks like good blood. That should be. Oh yeah, he didn't make it far. That's a five star right there, guys. Assuming we did everything right, and I hope we did. We got our first five star. Would have liked to have saved that for the live, but the five stars make me nervous. You never know when they're gonna die. I have no idea, like of old age, they can die on you in old age. So there's a five star. You don't see very many of those. Um, I haven't anyway. Let's see what this says. Ooh, that's a lot of blood. Lot of blood, air bubbles, animal expires quickly and must be nearby. And he didn't take but just a few steps. As long as we did everything correctly, I mean, we, we got left lung, right lung. Grandpa's old rifle did the, did the, the work for us. We got Hunter, right, Hunter rating of five. We got a five star trophy rating. That's pretty awesome. For 85.64 genetics. Does that mean he had like 15% life left maybe? Not really sure about that, but there is our first five star. Let's taxidermize that. 